setting up a little bit back from a restock site that's around the corner from us, about four or five hundred yards in front, and uh, there's been quite a lot of deer coming down onto that restock. So I want to check that out this morning, but what I particularly would like to get, I, I want a seeker for the table. Um, there's quite a lot of seeker down in here. And we're obviously going to shoot whatever we've got because we're protecting that as a vulnerable site, but seeker is, is what I'd like to get. Uh, it's a really thick forest this, this, that's why the seeker like it, so there's not a lot of open in it, but we, we get to the open area around here and hopefully catch something before they go back into the thick cover. Yeah, it got bitterly cold up here. I had to lie here for about 15 minutes. Um, plan worked really quite tricky. We've got a bit of breeze now. I managed to get through all this scrubby rubbish. I managed to just see a couple of what I suspected seeker up in the thick on the edge of the conifers. Just got the whiteness moving. So we were able to kind of work back round and come up through these uh, old oaks and get into quite a nice position from across the bank and then just wait and I shot the first seeker just as it came clear literally just managed to be able to see it and get the outline on the bank in and the other one I don't think knew what happened and um, initially ran up and slowly worked down through the through the trees I initially didn't have a shot because it was it was uh, obscured but then it, it came uh, yeah I know you want to go and find a deer and then it came uh, came clear just give me the chance of a shot so so we'll just give it a couple of minutes to settle down and then let my dog, who's keen as must to go and find these deer, which I can clearly see because they're laid there, but she doesn't know that, uh, and get her kidneys. Bitterly cold. <laughs> going to continue actually because it's quite early we've got the deer grouped off i've fully grouped them out and we've just used our makeshift lighter just let them drain i like to keep the deer cooling and it's just nicely stiffening up and draining down the blood's dripping out of them so that's effective we've got minus two this morning so we've got a chiller there's a breeze, breeze blowing straight down it's blowing straight into those carcasses which are open there and draining off so they're not coming to any harm we're just going to continue and go out onto some open ground just on the right here um, Usually there's a few reds loitering just on the on the edge of that because there's a basin that's pretty sheltered. It'll be out of this cold wind and we won't have disturbed anything this morning. So we're going to go and have a look over here. Nice morning.
We had a classic uh, cameraman stoker scenario. Um, dog was indicating off the top of the hill here. Clearly something down below us, and as we got onto the ridge line, you're looking down below, you can see just a group of reds, a car, a couple of hinds. Um, working along this, this, this bottom ridge, I came left, got onto a mound. Um, the original deer I was on, which Graham was filming, moved off for me around the back of this scrubby uh, crap here and I couldn't get the shot. But a, a, a hind came in beautifully along the wall here, uh, which I nicely shot. Um, thinking we'd got all that on camera for you, but Graham's filming the original calf, which he could see quite clearly from where he was. So that ran off and he thought I'd missed and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me and I'm looking at a dead deer and he's looking at a calf running that way, calling me names. Um, so we got it anyway, but you didn't quite see that bit, but you'll obviously see the recovery and everything. It's beautiful down here now, bitterly cold, but a lovely, lovely day. Um, fortunately, we've got a quad track here. Um, so we'll go back and, and get the bike uh, and bring the bike in to recover it. I've just scrawled at the calf and left it the hind and left it tucked at the back of the wall there. Uh, my dog's had a mad blast. I don't know where she gets her energy from, wish I had as much. Um, now she's waiting for home. Finally managed after uh, being inundated with clients to get the new Swarovski Z6i. This is a 12 by 50 scope onto the the rifle, and the rifle I use a lot is an old um, Seiko 75. Um, I love it actually, really, really sweet shooting rifle, a 6.5 by 55 caliber, so the old Swedish. But the stock was getting a bit battered, so um, I put a Macmillan stock in it, so giving it a bit of a makeover. Uh, really, really handles well. So we've now got the new scope on it. Um, thank you very much to Sarovsky. So what I'm going to do is just set this up this morning. Um, I'm in the crossover between uh, lead and non-toxic ammunition. So the best ammo I've found at the moment in the non-toxic is the S&B Blue, which I've been using now in the Creedmoor for about six or seven months, and I do like it actually. 120 grain. Um, which again is exactly the same as I'm using in the Creedmoor, so I don't anticipate any problem with it. Sarovsky scopes I love, um, it's quality. Illuminated reticle on it, ballistic turret. To be honest, I don't use the ballistic turrets on, on rifles, I'm very old school. I'll set this up um, probably three quarters of an inch higher to 100, and then I, I, I don't sh believe in long range shooting, I'm about field craft, so I like to get close into my deer. Um, but if I do need to take a longer shot, then you know I kind of calculate that in my head. I know the technology's there and all the rest of it, but I, I don't know. I just prefer to to do it the way that I've always done it, and it works for me. So I'm I'm sticking with it. So I'm a bit long in the tooth for messing around. But you know, if you want a long range shooting, um, the facility is there to uh, you know to dial in whatever ranges you want to set your rifle up to through the through the turret. But we'll just stick to the we'll just stick to the old method. So we'll see how we go. So I've done a, a bore sight on the on the scope and um, and we'll kind of see how it goes on the range and then uh, my intention is to get out into the field fairly soon and start putting it through its paces. So that's now got that zeroed in to where I want, three quarters of an inch to an inch high at 100, which is where I like to set it. Pulled slightly one shot to the right, but I'm happy with that. So now we get it into the field and put it through its paces with a proper test. 